What's up, vapers? Thanks for checking out Daily Vape TV. My name is Nick, and it's Fresh Build Friday. That's right, we got a brand new coil build for you guys to try out today. I've got this Rig Pig Mechanical Series box mod that we're going to be building on, and this one's going to be great for any series mechanical box out there because not only is it a safe build at 0.5 ohms, but it also makes your batteries last a long time. It produces plenty of vapor, and it gives you great flavor. So we got all four corners covered. We're firing on all cylinders. I'm ready to go. I hope you're ready to go. Go ahead, grab your mod, your Addy, your wick, your wire, your tools, all that good stuff. Let's go down to the close-up view and build it up. All right, guys, so as you can see, we have our rig pig all broken down. And what we're going to be using today for wire is just this 24 gauge Canthal. It's a very simple build, but it's very effective. It's really hard hitting and it's safe. Uh, that's the best part about this build is it's very safe. So uh, first thing you want to do is just grab about a foot or so, maybe a little bit over a foot of this Canthal wire. And that's what we're going to be needing for these wraps. So I'm just going to snip off a section there. Try to find the center by just uh, holding the two ends like that and just kind of clipping where you feel like the middle is. Right about there. You're going to hold both wires parallel. And you're going to bring in your bit. Let's move the pig out of the way real quick. So you're going to put the two leads side by side inside the little bit here and you're going to start your wraps. Just make sure these wires stay parallel. That's the, the key to this whole thing right here. And today we're going to be do, doing 10 wraps. All right, so next step is you take the uh, coil off of the jig and then reinsert it there uh, without the leads going into the little hole at the top if you have this kind of similar kind of jig here. Um, if you're just wrapping around a screwdriver, just uh, keep going on with the next step here. Um, what I like to do is I just like to grab the, the longest part of the lead there and just give it a good pull. That way it gets out any slack in that wire there. So there's no chance that that's uh, gonna cause a little issue later on with this build. Um, so the next step is getting these coils separated. So I like to just straighten out my leads as much as I possibly can. And I know this is probably not the easiest way to do a spaced coil, but you know what? It really works for me, especially when you just have it still on this jig like so. Uh, it's just so effective and I find it pretty functional. So uh, I'm just gonna spin this lead here and that's gonna cause the whole coil to kind of separate from the other one. And once you kind of get into that rhythm, that motion, it becomes really easy. So that's kind of why I do this. And it just makes such a perfect spaced coil every single time. So that's, that's why I use this technique. But, you know, if you use the uh, screw thread technique, then go for it. You know, it's really the beauty of building. You can just do it your own way and your own style. And just however is easiest for you to build. And as you can see, it, the further off the coil it gets, the easier it gets. So there you go. We have two perfectly spaced coils. Let me get you a close-up of that. So there you go. As you can see, we have our two perfectly spaced coils. Next up is we're going to just bend up those leads so they fit inside this Roughneck V2. So what I like to do to make it fit inside the Roughneck V2 is just make sure that first lead that's going into our positive post is nice and straight. And I give it my traditional 90 degree bend or just about 90 degree bend and then you leave about two or three millimeters and then bend it back that way that coil is shifted over a lot that way it fits inside the roughneck v2 there's really not a whole lot of room inside the roughneck itself so uh, you got to make space wherever you can and that's one way to do it right there I uh, usually leave the negative lead alone for the most part because I really feel like any adjustment on that and it's just going to push the coil further off to one side. So I'm just going to leave that negative just like it is right there and we're going to repeat this process for our other coil. All right, so now that we have our leads all bent up, now we're ready to install these coils. So first thing I'm going to do is just install the longer lead here, which just so happens to be the negative lead. Make sure all your screw terminals are open. And we're just going to seat this coil as close as possible to the actual 
uh, terminal itself before we screw it down. We're just going to screw the negative one in for now, like so. And then, after you've bent up your positive lead, which is what I usually do, um, there you go, just get that out of the way. You're going to install your second coil, just like that. And if you got your spacing right, it should be pretty well set already. Screw the negative down, like that, and now when you have your positives positioned where you like it, you're just going to screw that down as well. So now what we're going to do is just clip off our excess wire here, just as flush as you can possibly get it. And if you have your screws tightened down really well, then you can just wiggle these positive leads and they should just come off relatively easily. All right, so now everything should be relatively clean. The coils might need a little bit of touch up here. So what we're going to do is just straighten them out and pull up on them a little bit so that they straighten out real nice and get them away from that, those posts. And you also want to make sure you're going to have enough clearance. So if you don't have nearly enough clearance like this, um, I usually just take my ceramic tweezers and just kind of nudge that coil off a little bit off the sidewall. That way I have enough clearance for my cap to go on and it still leaves a nice little space. So that should be good right there. Now I'm just going to do it again. So there we go. There we have it. We have our 10 wrapped space coil right there. Let me just give you a close up of that. Yeah, it looks pretty good. A um, few little spacing issues here and there, but you know what? Once we get some heat on those coils, it'll make it a little bit more rigid. So I feel like that would definitely affect this whole build here. So let's go ahead and heat these things up and see where we're at. Pulse firing, of course, at first just to kind of get a glow on those coils. We're looking all right, not too bad. So once you temper those coils a little bit with some heat, then you can kind of work with them a little bit better. I just like to pull them out and stretch them, uh, make sure they're uh, pretty rigid. And if you have to adjust the leads or anything like that, I recommend just doing it with your bit already through there and just kind of adjust it with your uh, tweezers just like this here. The ceramic tweezers work really great just for evening out the spacing a little bit. You can strum your coils a little. You can kind of just nudge everything over towards the middle more and that's how you're gonna just adjust these coils. Just make sure you have some decent amount of tension on there so it's away from the posts and everything lines up nice and straight. So the way you work on these coils is just by inserting your bit back through and if you have to do any spacing or anything like that all you got to do is just kind of pluck out each individual coil and just give it a nudge that way you can work out the spacing just make sure everything stays good and tight of course double check your screws i always like to just give them a little bit of a snug just to make sure everything's good to go and we're looking good Oh, there we go. That one was a little bit loose. That's why I always, always, always double check. So let's go ahead and fire these things up again. And as you can see, there's almost no ramp up time. They get really bright and really hot very quickly. So that's why I think this is definitely a good build for this mod here. Uh, plus the spacing keeps everything a little bit cooler. Um, I really don't like a ton of spacing in there. That's kind of why I have it adjusted the way I do. So the next step is wicking it. I've got some Japanese cotton here that we're going to be using today. I like to use about half a sheet for each coil. That tends to work out pretty well for three millimeter. And we're just prepping the cotton right now just by ripping off the hard edges and any little fragments that are flying out from the edges there. And we're just going to roll it up real quick. And we're going to install it in one of our coils. Just be careful with this step because you don't want to pull it so tight that the space is eliminated. You want to keep that spacing as much as you possibly can because that's really the heart and soul of this build. 
And we're going to go ahead and repeat that process. All right, so when you have that all set, you just want to trim it off right at the edge of the deck, just like that. You really don't want too much cotton in this build. Um, it just kind of cramps up the airflow and doesn't make it a very satisfying vaping experience. And you want to just fluff up the ends like we normally do. And then we're going to rake the loose edges out there. As you can see, we have some fluff flying off. That's good. That's what we don't want to be vaping on. We want nice, loose, airy cotton for the ends and nice, tight cotton inside our coils. Once again, we give a little haircut here just to remove any flyaways and excess cotton. And I really tend to use like the minimum amount of cotton really necessary, I suppose. Um, I don't really think I drip any more than the average person. Uh, I just feel like it's a little bit easier to work with and provides me with the maximum amount of airflow. So next we're just going to tuck it in here. All right, guys, it's a moment of truth. It's time to see some vapor production. Well, I'd say she's doing pretty good. Let's go back to the main screen, have a quick vape on this thing, and we'll talk about it some more. All right, guys, we are back. Now we're going to go over some of the finer points on this build and some of my personal thoughts. Now, my first category, as always, is the heat. And the heat on this one is, I would say, almost moderate to cool, almost. It's a nice, warm, satisfying vape. And I know what you're thinking, 8.4 volt output. This thing should feel like lava is entering my lungs. But in fact, no, it's a nice, satisfying, warm vape without being overly scorching hot. Now, I'm not sure if that has to do with the 24 gauge wire that I use for this one or the spaces in the coil. I really like using 24 gauge for a series box mod because I feel like any thicker gauge wire like 22 is just going to be a lot for those batteries to ramp up and I like to keep my batteries in good condition so I like using something that's it's going to be easy for the mod to handle and that was definitely this build here. I posted it up on my snapchat like a week ago and I got a lot of good responses. Uh, shout out to Big Philly from Local Vape. He's basically the inspiration behind this build so uh, make sure you go check him out on Instagram. Instagram. I'll leave a link in the description, but he's really the, the reason I decided to do this build and the fact that the rig pig is coming out and people are starting to buy them. And I just kind of wanted to do a little bit of an updated series build since the noisy cricket safe build video was so popular. Anyways, my second category is the ramp up and ramp down time. Now the ramp up time is almost instant. I mean, this thing fires up within not even half a second, like a quarter of a second, and this thing is fully ripping. And that's great because that's really what I'm looking for out of a series box. You don't have that long, slow, two to three second ramp time or anything like that. This thing just fires up right when you put it to your lips and press that button. And I'll give you an example real quick while I test the ramp down time. So to be perfectly honest with you guys, the ramp down time is actually lower than average, I would say, considering it's not like a heavy Clapton or alien wire coil or anything like that. I'm getting about maybe a two second ramp down time before it kind of goes to a lower sizzle, I suppose. And that is perfectly acceptable in my book because I don't like my coils sizzling for too much longer. And especially with those complicated, uh, larger wire builds and all that stuff, like those crazy alien wires and fused claptons and staggers and staples and all that stuff, that's a lot of wire to be heating up and to let cool down. With a 24 gauge, it cools down relatively quickly, which is why I absolutely love this build. Now my next category is the difficulty of this build. I would say it's, you know, moderate to average. If you can build a parallel coil, then you can do this build no problem. The trick is really with this one is getting that positive lead moved over far enough so that you have plenty of cap clearance and room for wicking material in there. And it's very difficult to get this one centered because you want to keep that spacing as nice as you possibly can. You know, it's kind of like working with uh, nickel wire for doing a temp control build or something like that. It's just a little bit more tricky to get right. But after, uh, 
uh, I find that this build is a little bit easier than a uh, temp control build because you can actually ramp these coils up before putting your cotton through them and that kind of tempers the wire a little bit and makes it a little bit more rigid. So an average builder would definitely be able to handle this build no problem. Now my final category is the flavor. The flavor on this one is outstanding. I'm using the Blaz Melon flavor in this one, and I'm getting a nice crisp top note to this one, a lot of sweetness, a lot of that fruity flavor. Now I've heard this build doesn't handle creams and custards as well. There's absolutely no cream or custard in this flavor, so I really can't give you any insight on that. And I have not used a cream or custard on this build so far, but you know what? I feel like for the brighter flavors, for the candy flavors, for the sweeter flavors, flavors, this one is going to be top notch. And I'm getting full on the full spectrum of flavor in this one. So it does actually surprisingly well for flavor for just being a simple, simple build. So real quick, I'm just going to blow a few more clouds and then we'll sign out. So as you can see, I'm getting plenty of vapor production out of this build. That about does it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you stay tuned for fresh build week starting next week on Monday, going till Friday. That's right, I've got five, count them, five build videos for you guys. Every single day of next week, we're gonna be doing a brand new build. So definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, leave me comments in the box below of what you think of this build video. Do you own a series box mod? Do you wanna try this build out for yourself? And if you do, make sure you leave your thoughts down there below. Of course, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. Check out the advocacy links in the description below. I have them down there for you so you can fight for your right to vape. Check me out on all my different social medias. I have Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you follow me on there. Like my page on Facebook. Check out my Snapchat. And of course, if you want to give me a couple of bucks on Patreon, that would be awesome as well. So thank you guys so much for joining me. And as always, vape on!